In this video, I'd like to talk about reasoning with linear equations. So we're going to be solving equations, but we're going to be thinking about why we might make one step rather than another. And we want to question whether our steps are valid. So in all of these questions, they're going to, they're going to ask you two different questions about these two equations. One question will be, how do you get from one to the other? And then the second question is just always going to be, are they both equivalent still? So did you actually do a valid step to get from one from A to B? So our question here, how can we get equation B from equation A? And looking at equation A, we have 3x minus 1 equals 7. So the general strategy for solving these two-step equations is to isolate your variable term. So get rid of your easy operations first, your addition and subtraction. Since we know that we want to get 3x by itself, we have to get rid of this minus 1 that's essentially attached to it. And to get rid of minus 1, you do the opposite. You want to do addition. So if we add 1 to each side, minus 1 plus 1, these cancel, and you just get 3x, and then 7 plus 1 equals 8. So we actually did get a valid equation from that, since these are both equivalent. Since we added the same thing to both sides of the equation, we didn't change the equation. Now, if this was something like 3x equals 7, then for our second question, are they still equivalent, we would say no. But since it was a valid operation, and they are the same equation still, then we can answer yes to number two. But for number one, how did we get from equation A to equation B? We added one on each side. So we're not doing the multiply or dividing steps, so we need to consider both these. And add and subtract the same quantity to or from both sides. So that's what we did. The second choice is to only add or subtract from one side. Now, if you do that, you change the equation. It's no longer the same equation. So we added the same quantity to both sides. We added one to both sides. And since that's a valid operation, and we did get back something that is true, we can answer yes to the second question. Based on the previous answer, are the equations equivalent? In other words, do they have the same solution? And the answer is yes. In fact, if we wanted to, we can even find the solution. Just from here, divide each side by 3, and you get that x is 8 thirds. But 8 thirds would solve both of these equations. And these questions don't ask you, ask you to actually find the solution. They just want to know if you understand the reasoning on how to get to the solution. So let's look at a different problem, but it's going to be very similar. So we again have to answer these two questions. How do we get from A to B? And then are they still equivalent to each other? So looking at A, whenever you see parentheses, you usually want to get rid of those first by distribution. Since minus 2 parentheses x minus 1, this just means to multiply. When you have parentheses, you know you need to multiply. So we need to distribute this minus 2 into both of those terms. And so when you do that, you get 5 is minus 2 times x, or minus 2x. And we have minus 2 times minus 1, which is positive 2. But notice that's the exact same thing as equation b. So these are equivalent. This was a valid operation. We did this distribution, or we used the distributed property. And when we rewrote it, equation b was equal to our simplification. So we know for sure that, yes, they are equivalent to each other. But now we want to answer, how do we know how to get from equation A to B? So what did we actually have to do here? So we didn't multiply or divide both sides by the same constant or the same variable expression. We didn't do that. We weren't multiplying or dividing both sides by anything. We did rewrite one side. But we didn't do it by combining like terms. We did it by using the distributed property. We just distributed here. We multiplied the negative 2 times the x and the negative 1. So we rewrote one side using that distributed property. And if you're just rewriting one side, you don't have to do necessarily an operation to both. We're just simplifying the right side. We're not actually changing it by adding or subtracting something or multiplying or dividing something. Everything we're doing was already there, and we're just making a simplification. So let's try a couple more of these. So now, how do we go from 
equation A to equation B. And we have these parentheses here. Now you could distribute, but sometimes when you have parentheses, it actually makes sense to do division first. So notice that we have three times x plus two, and we can cancel out that multiplication by three by doing division. So if we just divide both sides by three, three over three is just one, so those cancel. You get x plus two is six. And since with our valid simplification that we did, we just divided each side by three, and since we did it to both sides, we know it's valid, we didn't change it. When we simplified it, we got back equation B, which tells us that these two are the same. In fact, we can solve this, x would just be four, subtract two on each side, and four does solve both of these equations. If you plug it back in in either A or B, you would get back something true. So we're gonna be able to answer yes to question number two, but we wanna know how did we get from equation A to equation B? And we divided each side by three. So we can skip the adding and subtracting, and we multiplied or divided, so in this case divided, and we did both sides by the same non-zero constant. So constant is just a number, in this case was three, and they say non-zero because if you divide by zero, that's not a valid operation. You can't get back an answer when you do that. So it's actually undefined. So we have to say, you have to divide by the same non-zero constant. So any number, but not zero. And you have to do it on both sides. Notice this one only does it on one side, which is why D is not the answer. So C is our answer here. And let's do one final problem. So again, we're answering these same two questions. And so how do we get from equation A to equation B? And you can see that there's something wrong here because this is not true. So going from A to B, we're probably gonna answer no to question two because for letter A, there is a solution to that. But for letter B, there is no solution. Five is never going to equal three. So let's think about how you can actually go from A to B. And we didn't, we're not gonna add or subtract anything. In fact, what it looks like they did here, and this is not going to be a valid operation, it looks like they divided each side by x. Since each side has an x term, and if you divide by x, they can cancel each other out. Since we know something divided by itself is just one, and that's how you get five is three. But the reason that you can't do this is because we don't know what x is. And this kind of goes back to our previous question we were looking at up here where our, I was talking about dividing by a non-zero constant. The reason we can't divide by x is that we don't know if it equals zero or not. If x is zero, then you end up getting nonsense. And in fact, that's why you get back nonsense here because the solution to the top one is actually x is zero. And you can see that if you have five x equals three x, if I move the variables to one side, so if I subtract three x on each side, you get two x is zero, and then dividing each side by two, you get back x is zero. So zero is the solution to the top equation. So if you divide by x here, you're dividing by zero, which is not valid. You can't get an answer when you do division by zero. In fact, you just, you can't ever divide by zero. We leave it undefined because there is no reasonable answer to that. In fact, you can make an argument that division by zero gives you infinity, but you can make the opposite argument that division by zero would give you negative infinity. And since you get two completely opposite answers, we just say that it doesn't have an answer. So you can't divide by zero, which is essentially what they did here, which is why these two equations aren't equivalent. But let's think about how we got from A to B. What did they do here based on our choices? And we didn't add or subtract because we were multiplying or dividing. In fact, we divided by a variable expression. And we did do it to both sides and it was the same expression, it's just that these are not going to be equivalent A and B, so we would answer no here, because we divided by this variable expression, but that expression was equal to zero, and you can't divide by zero, which is why you ended up getting nonsense. So up here, we know the solution is x equals zero. Up here, there is no solution. So equations A and B do not have the same solution, which is why we answered no to question two.